guess I don't really know. I don't know what people <laughs> think when they browse my collection other than, wow, he's really cheap and his shit is really dusty. Uh, <laughs> I'm Jamie from Earthquaker Devices, and we are in my basement at my house in the middle of my gear hoard. There's very few things that I think I have where I'm like, oh my God, this is the best thing. I can never get rid of it, like I, that I feel really lucky that I got. This is my first real guitar, the Epiphone SC550, I think that's the model number. Epiphone Scroll, for a very long time, it was the only guitar I owned, and I used it in a band I used to be in, the Party of Helicopters, pretty much the whole time we were together. It's been on a bunch of tours, and I'm the one who fucked it all up. Uh, when I bought it, the neck was cracked off, so I didn't do that. But it's super sturdy, probably sturdier than it was when it was put together. I've changed the pickups like a million times, broke all this stuff. But it's one of the best playing guitars, probably the best playing guitar that I own, which I always forget until I pick it up. But it's got a really nice, thin, fast neck, uh, and it's huge. Feels like a bass. <laughs> I was always trying to get a backup for this guitar. And at the time, eBay was the only option. Reverb did not exist. Uh, and I was always getting beat out by a guy named Dr. Bond. And it wasn't until probably like four years ago that I did actually finally get a backup of the same model, which I did get on Reverb. Had neon green strings on it. That's probably why no one wanted it. But this one's awesome. So... This is another item I won't sell from my collection. This is a 1968 Jazzmaster. Um, I love the Jazzmaster. It's my favorite guitar style. This is probably the third or fourth one that I've owned, and it's the first one that I really bonded with. Uh, I got it for a crazy deal, probably like 12, 12 years ago. It was all original, but... I've changed the pick guard, I've changed the pickups, I've rewired it a million times, put this mastery bridge on it. Um, it's got two weird little holes right here. I have no idea why, but it is an incredibly comfortable guitar to play. I feel like all the vintage fenders, every neck is like slightly different. This one's like perfectly rounded. It has Seymour Duncan custom shop humbuckers made to fit a Jazzmaster in it, and it just sounds super good. The reason why I like the Jazzmasters is they're so, like, end-to-end, -end, it's pretty much the same length as the Epiphone Scroll, which I played forever. Um, and I love this tremolo. And usually, like, on a modern Jazzmaster, I would replace this with, like, a Mastery Vibrato. This is super nice. It's, like, really perfectly broken in, makes no noise. probably own 20 jazz masters. Um, right now I have 9, 10, 11. I have 11 jazz masters. <laughs> no, I have 12 jazz masters. I'm starting to think about playing it live again because it does feel like a waste to have like your favorite guitar but then you don't touch it because you're afraid you're going to break it. It's like, well, just don't break it. Don't do that. So this is another thing that I won't sell, this Korg guitar synthesizer. It's an X911. Uh, very dusty, rarely gets used, but first look at it, kind of awesome. Way ahead of its time, I feel like. It's a monophonic guitar synth, and you gotta be super careful, and play on the neck pickup and all that, but it, 
it's got an incredible sound. Make the guitar sound like a trumpet, a tuba, an electric bass, distortion guitar, violin, flute. It all sounds like square wave guitar synth, uh, but it's awesome. It's super cool. It's got a slider, all the things you want, big knobs, little knobs. to come by and I think I got it at a time when they were what I would deem affordable popped up on reverb for a good price and I was kind of blown away by it it, it was way cooler than I thought it would be this Harmony 525 is another piece of gear that I'll never sell I don't even remember when I got it how much I paid for it where I got it I hate the way it looks I hate anything with racing stripes on it so I'm really unclear what attracted me to it. It is kind of a good looking amp. I think that I had heard that it was very close, if not exactly the same, as a Supro Thunderbolt, like a vintage Supro Thunderbolt. It's a 115. Just has treble bass and volume controls. And I think it has an accordion or microphone input. It does in case I choose to sing or play accordion ever in my life. Really all I'm ever looking for is, does it get really loud? Is it a good deal? <laughs> That's pretty much it. Uh, can it handle pedals well? Does it like sub-octaves? And this, this checks all those boxes and it's about as simple as it can possibly be. There's something about it though where it just has, it has like a really big boomy low end but it never gets like mushy and the top end isn't, isn't harsh ever. I leave it pretty much set flat. And it's just kind of the amp that I gravitate towards all the time when I'm playing here in my uh, basement. Yeah, like everything ends up getting played through that. So I had someone repair this amp one time and they told me it must have caught on fire because the baffle in the back was all burned up and there's some ashes, ashes in it. So, you know, maybe that's why it sounds so good. This Univibe, another thing, highly doubt I'll ever sell. Hard to come by, getting more and more expensive. Never know what you're gonna get because it can be pretty finicky. This one is in great shape. Um, I bought it when I was working on the depths, just so I could have an actual Univive and it cost a small fortune. I think it might be the most money that I spent on a pedal while trying to develop a pedal. Also pretty rare that I would buy it like in, in development. guitar probably knows what a univibe sounds like. It's something like a phaser, something like a vibrato, but it sits really nice between. It's not overpowering. And to my ears, it's like one of the most pleasing like modulation effects. It's KMD analog delay, another piece of gear that I won't sell. This is the first pedal I ever bought. And somehow it still works most of the time. I use this all the time in Party of Helicopters. It was on my pedal board for Again, the whole time we were band, like nine years, toured a bunch, always worked great. Then I kind of, you know, 
replaced it with something else, a bunch of analog delays, earthquake or pedals, things like that. And then Party of Helicopters got back together for a reunion show for Earthquaker Day in 2018. And I pulled it out to use it. And the one time I went to use it, it malfunctioned and cut my guitar off. So of course, it didn't work the one time I really needed it to. But you know, aside from it being the first pedal that I owned, there is something about this. It's very close to a Boss DM2. It's a little darker. It has a tone control that is always in the circuit, even when it's off. It's a buffered bypass pedal, but you would think the tone would be bypassed too, but no, it's always on. The whole time that I was in that band using this pedal, I had no idea that the tone control was active. It wasn't until later, and I really started paying attention to how gear works, that I knew, noticed that it was like, oh shit, this is on all the time. What a terrible decision. Maybe they'd be surprised that I have this perfect bootleg clunk <laughs> instead of an actual real one.